welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Eskom reported another big loss for its 2021 financial year and has again outlined the unsustainable nature of its debt. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what it all means. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. With a nearly 19 billion rand loss, were there any positives? Yes, I think there were a number of positives uh, in these results. I think uh, the one we saw that uh, employee costs uh, were sort of controlled even though we saw a 7% wage increase settlement during the year. Very, very surprisingly was the primary energy costs only rose in, in a single digit, 3%. That's the first time in many, many years where uh, Eskom's uh, primary energy costs are, it looked like they're under control. Look, it was an abnormal year because we had the massive fall off in demand from uh, COVID lockdowns and uh, that lopped seven, uh, nearly 7% off uh, Eskom sales and therefore they did use less coal but we also had a lot of load shedding and generally when there's load shedding uh, we use a lot more open cycle gas turbines that's diesel and that's very expensive to to run so the fact that primary energy costs looked like they were under uh, came under uh, more control and that the outlook for primary energy costs is also looking like it's going to stay below the, the, the t sort of double digit figure I think is an important development uh, at Eskom. So I think that's a positive. Also, the um, the moves towards right sizing the business. Uh, we see that um, uh, you know the Eskom has this target of a sub forty thousand employee type level across its three businesses of generation, transmission, and distribution. Uh, it's been well above that level for many many years, and it's still above that level. But we can see it trending towards that target uh, of about 38,000, 39,000 employees. So that's another uh, positive. In an otherwise very difficult year, again, as I said, sales are down. Uh, municipal debt is up. up. Uh, Soweto debt was surprisingly down, but I think there are uh, moves there to try and resolve that. But that uh, rise in, in municipal rear debt is a, is a big problem for Eskom. Um, and it's rose at the end, year end, which we must remember it's all the way back in March. It was at 35 billion rand, which is a massive number. And that's the non, not including Soweto. And uh, since then, it's risen to closer to 40 billion rand. So we haven't really got our hands around that issue. But I think there are a number of positive trends. And then obviously the big ticket uh, positive was that the, the debt figure fell by 81 billion rand on a combination of taxpayer support that allowed them to uh, re retire debt early, as well as the, the, the RAND exchange rate, the RAND strengthening during the period, which uh, had an effect on in, in terms of accounting entry, in terms of its uh, ultimate debt number. So falling by 81 billion RAND to still 400 billion RAND, which is a big number. The debt issue remains a big one, despite it having fallen by 81 billion RAND. Yes, you know, if you've got big debt like 400 billion RAND, but you've got uh, a revenue and a profitability outlook uh, that's able to cover that debt, that's one thing. But it's very clear that, and, and Eskom's been saying this for many, many years, that Eskom doesn't has a, have a pathway out of, of, out of its debt crisis. Um, just its uh, operating surplus was 31 billion rand. It's simply its in, uh, debt repayments on interest was 37 billion rand. They had to pay another 66 billion rand in capital uh, to, to bring down that debt during that year. These are obligations that you have to meet. And the only way they're meeting that obligation is through the taxpayer support. So last year they got 56 billion rand. This year they get another 31 billion rand. And then there'll be 21 billion rand for the next two years at least. And the, unless there's an, a debt resolution, um, that, that will be this sort of continual taxpayer support. Uh, we have to find, so there has to be a structural solution. Uh, there, there's not going to be a way of either saving, and that was actually a positive. There's definitely signs that uh, the business is being able to save uh, and become more efficient in the way it spends, and, and also to trade its way out of this crisis. We can see the, the sales numbers are already flat to declining, and that's a, that's a long-term secular trend. Uh, where you know this economy hasn't been growing for more than 10 years and therefore you can't expect sales to go up and also the mix of that uh, those sales there's more and more sales going to municipalities or to residents that can't pay and less and less sales going to businesses and industries that can pay so it's a it's a it can't save or trade its way out of this crisis 
Is there a solution inside to the debt problem? Sadly not, and I think that uh, is quite a problem because um, we've had uh, the, all the social partners, Labour leading the charge, uh, rightly, because uh, they can see the crisis and what it means for workers and for the economy, uh, as well as business and government, uh, coming to a compact at the end of last year and saying we need to find a solution to this unsustainable uh, legacy debt uh, burden. Um, and this legacy debt is a combination of things. I know that corruption gets a lot of focus, and that is uh, definitely an element of this debt. But actually, it's been th uh, th we've had s um, subpar increases, tariff increases. Although we've had a, a step change, we've actually had tariffs that are that were far too low for far too long. Um, and basically, uh, Eskom has to be at a cost-reflective level. Its tariff has to be at that level, and we still aren't at that level. And they're saying even after MYPD5 application, which is the application that is currently before NURSA but hasn't been published yet, even after those three years, we are unlikely to be at a, a cost-reflective level. So therefore, the gap continues to grow. And the only way to fund that gap has been to raise debt. And now we're in a pl position where Eskom without government support can't raise new debt. So it really is a problem that government hasn't been more assertive with Eskom in sorting this out. I think Eskom keeps making the the plea keeps uh, making the statement that it's unsustainable. Uh, business and Labour agrees with Eskom, but uh, the National Treasury and the Department of Public Enterprises haven't come yet uh, after so many months with a, a visible solution. We're not even uh, getting any visibility of the potential options on the table. So it's really at the, the, the slow pace of getting to resolution of this legacy problem is, is a big, big, big issue. What could this mean for ESCOM's just energy transition transaction? Well, the transaction really requires the raising of new debt. So we've got this huge debt pile. We've got a national treasury that's debt averse at the moment, which understandably, if you look at our national accounts, but there's this opportunity to raise very highly concessional. This is really good long tenure, low interest rate debt to really support two things. One. The, the, the transition, uh, the, the energy transition that is necessary in South Africa to move towards a low um, carbon economy. We know that we have a very highly carbon intensive economy, which is a major risk to business that want to trade internationally as carbon border adjustment taxes are being spoken about. And as the world decarbonizes, we are, we are uh, at risk if we don't decarbonize our system. And, uh, and we're in a sweet spot in many ways because we've got a got plant that is 40 years old. If you exclude Madupi and Kusile, uh, it makes sense to replace that uh, with uh, something else. And something else is a lot cleaner. And the, the great news is that cleaner is also cheaper, which wasn't the case 10 years ago when we made the decision, or more than 10 years ago when we made the decision to invest in Madupi and Kusile. Coal was still the cheapest game in town. It's no longer the cheapest game in town. The combination of solar PV, wind, and flexible generation is cheaper than new coal. And coal, new coal can't also can't be financed. So that's, that's the one leg, to get this finance to support that transition both within Eskom and outside of Eskom. Because outside of Eskom will use that, yes, to do some solar and wind of its own, but it will most, Im more importantly, invest in the transmission and distribution infrastructure, which facilitates the investment around that in a competitive generation and a cleaner generation. And the other component of that is to, uh, to raise finance to cushion those workers that are and communities that are currently tied to the coal value change. This, this is embedded in the Paris Agreement commitments. Uh, you have to transition justly. Uh, we have to find a way to transition justly, and the international community is making more and more commitments to financing those just transitions. So there's a window of opportunity. That window really is very open uh, in November uh, uh, with COP26 coming, uh, coming up, but it does require new, fresh debt, yes, on highly concessional terms. So if you don't deal with the legacy debt issue and you don't find a way for Eskom to take on more debt or for government to take on more debt on behalf of Eskom, then it's going to be a hurdle in the way of going through that window of opportunity in November. So that's the issue. We should have got our head around this already. We should already have a solution so that when we go, that we're all on one page when we go to COP26. Unfortunately, we haven't got a solution. We haven't got our hands around the problem. And COP26 is, is you know, 
um, a couple of weeks away. So that is that is the that is the problem I think with not dealing with this legacy problem that we know that it can't be dealt with by ESCOM saving and trading its way out of out of a uh, situation, and we know that the uh, transition to cost reflectivity is also some way away. Government has to come to the party, uh, and up, up until now, sadly, it hasn't. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.